Praise the Lord. Saints, Will Smith here with his wife and co-host. Tamika Smith. And we're here preparing souls to meet Jesus Christ. Yes. And we're still going over the spiritual discipline. You know, we've been talking about it for the last five to six weeks. We've been skipping weeks in between. And the thing is, the Lord is moving. And we just yes. have to be on point and we have to discipline ourselves in our areas. You know, the first week we talked about prayer. The second week we talked about solitude. The third week we talked about silence. The fourth week meditation. And the last uh week we talked about study. Mm -hmm. And this week we'll be, we will be discussing simplicity. And don't think simplicity is just uh having a simple life. That ain't what it's saying. Simplicity is, is something or a state of quality of being plain, not fancy or complicated. And when Jesus came, he did not come to be fancy. He didn't come to gain a reputation. He didn't come to make things complicated. But he did come to fulfill scripture. And when he came, he came as a humble servant. And he was a humble servant, obedient even unto the death, even Amen. unto the cross. So we have to be in that same state of mind. And we have to realize that we can't uh think that we can live like the Joneses once we have... uh gave all life to Jesus Christ. Once we have determined that we're going to live for him, then that's what we are going to do. We yeah. can't try to take it any other route. We can't try to go any other route. We, I mean, the people of the world are blessed with calling. So yeah. so what difference is it if, if I had this old fancy call? How is that bringing somebody to Christ? The people of the Lord are blessed. Uh, not the people of the Lord. The people of the world are blessed with housing. I mean, okay, I have a big house, but how is that bringing people to Christ? Yeah. Jesus went and he sat and he took the time to eat with sinners. He took the time to, to heal those that were on by the wayside and deliver them. He delivered each and every person that my bishop say he delivered each and every person. Mm -hmm. He delivered each and every person that came into yeah. contact with him. He didn't turn them away. He didn't tell them that they didn't have pants out. Even Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, the one that was low in stature but climbed up high just so he could see the Lord. Lord said the day how about it, your and and when that man went allowed the Lord into his house, he said this. He said, "All that I have, I will that I owe anybody, I will give it back tenfold. All that I, that I owe anybody, I will give it back tenfold." And Jesus said, "Salvation has come unto this man, but not only to this man, but also to his house." Amen. So we have to we have to realize that salvation is very important, and the Lord has called us. And when He called us, it means that we have. Uh, areas of our life that we have to work on so that we can live for the Lord 100%. And we're going to go to all, all spiritual disciplines and Christian ministry guide by Beverly Voss and my wife just going to read off a little bit on simplicity and then we'll come with scriptures. Simplicity. Praise the Lord everyone. Praise the Lord. Simplicity. Our culture is played by passions to possess. Hamilton and Demonis Right, that although Australians won the world richest country, two thirds of Australians still believe they cannot afford to buy everything they really need. They state that as a rule, no matter how much money people have, they they feel they need more. Tozar says things have become necessary to us, a development never originally intended. God's gift now take. The place of God and the work, the whole course of nature is upset by monstrosity. The God's gift now take the place of God, and, and we do that. We we take what God has given us and we replace it with God. So when God blesses us with something, we no longer feel as if we need God. And, and I'm I'm just gonna use what I heard the preacher man say. We often Take the milk and get rid of the cow. You forget that the cow is the one providing the milk. Amen. But then when you're done with the milk, what you gonna do? Go back to that. So back so it's time. and it's the same way it's the same way we treat God. Amen. So we had to we had to we had to really get it out of our mindset that we're supposed to have this uh fancy, wonderful way of living. Go ahead. In our desires for affluence, we tend to buy so much more than we really need. And that's true. I got it all around here. And waste so and much of and waste so much of what we do not use. Exactly. Are strain today buy far more food and luxury items than they can even use because it is safe and safeable 
insatiable, I'm sorry, appetite for more things, and this is inviolably, inviolably leads to a tremendous amount of waste. It is a gross understatement to say that our contemporary culture lacks the reality of simplicity. We have so much to do so much and want so much out of life. It is interesting that authors such as Tab claim that the only way you can get more out of life is to choose less. Mm. The Bible is clear about God's displeasure toward the accumulation of wealth and exploitation of the poor. The Old and New Testament abounds with examples of God wrath on those who ignore injustice and commands to care for the poor. The, the ostracized, the fatherless, and on those who put their trust in material things. Mm -hmm. Even our Christian culture is affected by the insane, insanity of affluence. It, it said our Christian culture, mm -hmm. our brothers and sisters, the way that we feel as if we have to have so much. I mean, <laughs> and, 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 and can I go to that scripture real quick? Okay. This, this is what James say. Because you know what? What we're going to do it different this time. As you read and scripture comes to me, I'm bringing the scripture that, that, that yeah, I, this I right here really So, so as, as, I, as you read and, and Lord give me the scripture or one of, one of the scriptures he has already given me is here. And you presented it. I'm going to cover it. So you just said something about the culture and the wealth and the different things. Even our Christian culture is affected by insanity of influence. Now, now Paul, I mean, James says this in, in chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. Yeah. He said, Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Why? Because your riches, your riches become miseries because it, become, it makes your life more complicated, yeah. whether you know it or not. And the simplicity in living without all that stuff. See, we think our life is harder yeah. when we have less. The devil is a lie. Amen. The devil is a lie. Adam and Eve had all they needed in the garden. God had supplied them. Amen. And because Amen. they want more knowledge, they wanted to have more understanding. They want to know the other side of the coin. Amen. Instead of just knowing what God had already provided them. That was, that's all they needed to know. And all they needed. But they felt like they want, they they needed to have more. So look what James said. He said, your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Now, just to make this clear, to make this Bible scripture clear, what it's saying that will be a witness against you is all that stuff that you're accumulating. Mm -hmm. Your phones, your watches, your cars, your houses, your lovers yeah you accumulate people too yeah. because people come in people go in mm -hmm. your life and even the christians do the same thing so we have to realize that those things will be a witness against us in the last mm -hmm. day i would rather have the holy ghost as a witness to my righteousness than my silver and gold being a a witness to my covetousness listen this stuff, this, this stuff you see me wearing, stainless steel. Brought up for $28 out of Walmart. I ain't buying no gold and I ain't buying no silver. I don't need all that stuff. And at the end of the day, if I have this stuff on, I have it on. If I don't, I don't. But everything I wear has a cross on it. And I know I don't, I don't need I don't need nothing to, to, to show my love for Jesus Christ. Because the way I live does it itself. It speaks for you. But I mean, James is speaking on the things that could keep us from entering into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And then he turned around and said, "And ye shall eat your flesh as it, and it shall eat your flesh as it were a fire. Yeah, he treads together. Yeah, he treads yeah. together for the last day." And Can you I? know, I was um to talk about what you were saying. That's why Paul tells us to be content in the state we're in. But so many times, because we see everybody else in the world. I'm used to work for an example because we were once in the world. Everything they had on, we had to go and try to get it. Shoes, clothes. I want to drink. I want to, like he said, be like the Joneses. Even though sometimes you couldn't afford it, but you still want to dress like everybody else. As they say, the fashion. I want to be in the trend with everybody else. Have, have that fashion trend. But not knowing that wasn't you. 
you want to be accepted by the world that don't love you. Instead of being accepted by the one person who do love you, your first love, that Jesus Christ. He loved us from the foundation of this earth. That was one reason why Satan was kicked out of heaven. Because of us. He wanted to sit himself above God and talk about us and destroy us. But, but look who we are. Take an examination. Look at yourself. And say, am I living like everybody else? Or I'm being myself. Because me, when I go to church, I don't care if people see me, how they see me. I'm not coming to put on a show for nobody. I'm coming to be as I am so Jesus can continue to cleanse me out. Because each and every day, it's a trying day. His flesh get weak. Each and every day, it is a trying day. And that's why you have to die day. Amen. Foster, going back to the booklet, Foster states that we buy things we don't need or even want to impress people we don't even like. Mm. And which we ultimately don't end up using. Mm. What is the point? He says that Western culture falsely says covenants, ambition, covenants equals. equal ambition, hoarding equals prudence, and greed equals industrialness. Industriousness. Yeah. Um. We, we have to. We thing. have to look at. The, the true cost of the discipleship. When when one of the followers, and, and not one of his disciples, but one of the followers came up to Jesus, somebody that was keeping up with him, they said to him, they said, wherever thou goest, I will follow. So Jesus replied. He said, Fox have hope. Birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have not nowhere to lay his head. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury the dead, but go down and preach the kingdom of God. Amen. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man Amen. having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and, and in Western culture, we do have that. I mean, I got shoes that <laughs> I don't. I wear them, but I could be content with a pair of shoes. But I got to have a pair of shoes match every color and every you know everything I wear. And I and I heard Bishop in the sermon say this. You know, we so blessed to the point where we <laughs> we yeah we we got so many clothes we you know don't wear them all. We got so many shoes. We got to, you know, kick them around just to get through that. And, 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 and instead of us realizing how blessed we are, we complain because of, of what we want yeah. and, and our desire be over, overpowered. And it takes me to the rich young ruler yeah. because he bragged about how he kept all the commandments from, mm -hmm. from his youth up. Yes, he did. Each and every one I kept. Mm -hmm. But Lord said, there's one thing that thou lackest. Come on. And he said, Lord, what is that? And when he told him, take all you have and mm -hmm. give it to the poor. He Jesus looked at, at Jesus. He looked at his disciples and probably thinking, to himself, how can y'all follow him saying that y'all got to give up all that you have? And there's even a conversation later on where Peter said, Lord, we gave up all that we have. And he said, those that gave up all that they have will be supplied with much more. Mm -mm. A hundredfold to what you Amen. what you gave up will be added unto you. Jesus. But he said that tribulation is going to come along with it. Yeah, that's it. But this is the thing. Is the the rich young rule, what he did was next, walked away sorrowfully. And Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven. He said, it is hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. For it's like a a camel going through the eye of a needle, for and a over camel. over in the it's Middle easier East, easier for a camel to go. It's easier eye. for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Mm -hmm. Over there, you know, they got those doorways that that are shaped like shaped that. Like, yeah, a keyhole, a big yeah. keyhole, and that's the eye of a needle. Mm -hmm. And the camels can't get through them, so they have to leave the camels without, so that they can take in whatever they're gonna go in and get, and leave that camel outside. The point in what Jesus was saying was 
when we carry all that extra, it is not allowing us room to let God in. Simplicity takes place with not having every, you know, as soon as a fashion change, you got to be a part of it. As soon as a new shoe come out, you got to have it. As soon as a, a, a new, uh, I don't know what it is, the new gaming system, the new the new glasses, the new, you know, new whatever phone. it is. Don't the, oh, the, phone. the newest phone, I got to have. They, that's why they make your phone so quickly. You be like, you just made an S6, but the S7 Galaxy is coming out. Why? Because people are spending money on those things like that. So why not make that? When Jordan came out, Jordan kept coming out with different shoes every so many months because people were buying them. Take something as simple as a mattress. They don't make many new mattresses because people don't come, don't buy them that often because they're expensive. But now they don't came out with the the phone mattress. How how long did that take them to buy a mattress versus different clothes, different shoes? Now they got a tie. They how long did it take them to make a tie? Because many people wasn't buying ties. Now they got a tie that zips up. <laughs> take that for an example. The things that people love the most, those are the things that come out quick with. Pay attention to the word. Pay attention to how, oh, it's it's a new how they are organized. Yeah, got here. The 2016 will be in sold in 2015. Yeah. Same way with 2017. Because those are the desires of people's heart. The discipline of simplicity offers a direct challenge to our sinful desires and influent lifestyle. That's it. What we were just talking about. Resulting in a life of joyful, unconcerned for possession. Our society needs the correct example of godly people who are not enslaved to the rat race of accumulating wealth and prestige. The discipline of simplicity will go a long way in developing some characteristics in our lives. Jesus Christ is the perfect example of what it is meant to live simple. He did not accumulate wealth or become deceived by the things of this world, and he avoided competitive popularity and prestige. When I was younger, I was, I, I was told... Our family member, I'm simple. And I didn't get it at first because I didn't. I Don't brought take things. Much to please. Yeah, I brought things, but it was like, what's the point? Why spend money on this? Why spend money on that? What's the point? And that worked. But my thing was, if I'm going to spend it on something, it's going to be worth something. And I'm, thank, I'm so thankful because people just call me crazy. I'm so thankful that God designed me the way He did because He said, We're a peculiar person. And I didn't understand why I act the way I act. When I, even when I was in school, my mama could go buy me some little flat shoes and I wore different colored shoes instead of wearing like Nikes and stuff. She could have bought them for me, but I didn't want those things. That was something that wasn't my desire. I didn't want to dress like everybody. I just wanted to be like Nika. Mm. One in a few. I Amen. was complicated. Not even going to lie. Uh, one of the Nikes, dad told me I had to go to work. Get them Nikes, and that's what I did. I worked to get them Nikes, but I'm gonna tell you what happened in the process. I stopped going to school. I started doing all types of ungodly things, and I made I complicated my life more than what it needed. And see, look what how the enemy came in, and that's what we talking about simplicity. Simplicity, it can be a sin. Uh -huh. Look how the enemy came in. One of uh, one thing that he wanted, and the enemy came in and turned his life upside down. Yep. And that's how the disciple world, they say, I was preaching the word. The word, they came and turned this world upside down. Let, let's look at the, the rich, the parable of the rich fool. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and uh, Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21, Jesus says this. And he said, now take heed and beware of covetedness. For a man, covetedness means desiring things, wanting things. So he's saying, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesses. Mm -hmm. This is what you're talking about. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. plentifully. Mm -hmm. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruit? Instead of giving it to the poor, instead yeah. of helping others, he thought about this. Mm -hmm. He said, And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and be a greater. Jesus. And that will be, that will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I Sell. will say to my soul, my soul, 
So thou hast much goods and laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Jesus. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that lay up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God? I mean, you can lay up all you want here on this side. But as James said, that stuff becomes a witness against you, yeah. right? So if it becomes a witness against you, then you're going against what originally God planned or meant for us to do with one another. And that was to give to each other, to help each other, to be a cheerful giver, to, to uh, give in love. Amen. And then Jesus said this. He said, seek ye the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. Now watch this, verse 22, through, and same chapter, verse 20, I'm going to go on down. So he said, and said unto his disciples, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. Mm -hmm. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. So he's teaching them on simplicity. Ain't that something? But the word isn't just given to you. But when you take the time to understand the discipline that the Lord has placed there for us, we can become better disciples mm -hmm. unto Christ. So then he said, The life is more than meat, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feeded them. How much more mm -hmm. are ye better than the fowl? Thank you. And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing, which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like none of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye a little faith? Go ahead. It made me think about how the elderly folks, they'll say, um, which you was, um, you can't take it to the grave, which why you getting all this stuff? What you getting it for? You can't take it with you when you die. When he was talking, it made me think about that, how the world say that. Simplicity as a dip, as a discipline is an inward reality that results in an outward lifestyle. And you know, simplicity, it, can I just re-quote this scripture? It brought back to my remembrance. Simplicity as a discipline is an inward reality that results in an outward lifestyle. God told, I mean, Jesus told the Pharisees and Sadducees, you are white as, white as serpicable, inward, like dead men bone. And he was saying, whatever they were showing, sure, what was on the inside, wasn't on the outside, what they were portraying the show. And that's what they talking about, your outward lifestyle. Your outward lifestyle ain't the same as what's on the inside. You just showing what you want people to think you are. Yeah. And that's what's wrong with the world. They showing a fashion. What they want people to think they are. And on the inside, you dead because you living a life without Christ. That's right. He Amen. said carnal life is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. However, simplicity is not easy to achieve. Not easy. Neither is it fundamentally simple. Now they go back to the rich young ruler. I mean, he didn't want to give up. Yeah. All he didn't want to give it up to the poor. He, he he thought about all that stuff that he had, and he like, man, to give that away would mean that I have to, I have to really, you know, work hard for for you know everything I do for now. And and the thing is, people work hard. People work hard and get the things, accumulate all this stuff, mm -hmm. but for what? He didn't. He didn't want to have to go without. Mm -hmm. That's what he was worried about. Mm -hmm. And let's look at that. Let's be real. A lot of us, we ain't ready to go to church without air conditioning. Yeah. We ain't ready to go to church in the woman without heat. We ain't ready yeah, to go right. go to church if it ain't got the, the proper uh bathroom or, or a toilet. You plumbing. We ain't willing to do that. We ain't willing to go sit out in the wilderness and listen to a man preach. Mm -hmm. We ain't willing to. We we ain't willing to 
to have to go into one of those other countries where they ain't got fast food restaurants. I, you know, I just don't have food at my disposal. Mm-hmm. We ain't willing to to uh go a day or two without eating so that somebody else can can mm-hmm. eat. Yeah. We ain't willing to. Let's just be honest. And it, it said it over and over again in the Western hemisphere mm-hmm. this is the way that we react to things like that. Mm-hmm. And then we sit back and we say, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Well, I pray when Jesus comes, he doesn't find me covered in Come on. Amen. things that I don't need. I pray that, that I have let go of those foolish desires that hold me from, kept me from having a closer relationship with him. Amen. That's one of the things Timothy spoke on when he was saying in the last days, that we live in a dangerous time, that was one of the things, covenant. He spoke about. In fact, let me go back. However, simplicity is not easy to achieve, nor is it fundamentally simple. In fact, it is actually complex because it goes against accepted values and expectations. Both the greedy and the misery do not know simplicity, as it has nothing to do with an abundance or a lack of possession. Simplicity relies on receiving all we have as a gift and trusting what we do have to have to God and being willing to give it to others. But it also requires an outward expression and simplicity must affect the way that we live. However, there are logistic no rules, legalistic. legalistic rules as to what simplicity should look like. Foster suggests Ten principles of developing simplicity in one's life, including buying things for their usefulness and not their and not their stat, status. Okay, and, and this is what I want to say. Lord been dealing with me about camping. That's something I said I would never. Do. I am. And but I, mean, I said I that I wouldn't do it at all. And the Lord been dealing with me about it. So what he has been doing is he been guiding me on the proper things that I need to get me to go camp. Which this is something I never done. I ain't asked nobody how to do it. But he has led me. And as he leads me, I pray that I can learn to have a more uh more simplicity in my life to the point where I don't feel like I have to be around electricity in order to survive i don't feel like i have to have running water in order to to uh you know use the bathroom or whatever the case is or take a bath Mm -hmm. but just depending on on god totally and fully because really take that in the in the uh into heart when jesus said Foxes have holes, birds of the air have this, Mm -hmm. but the son of man had nowhere to lay his head he didn't have his own home to go to but he did ministry. His mm-hmm. ministry was, was was healing people. His ministry was helping people. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jesus. But many of us ain't willing to 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 do ministry outside of of the four walls. Mm-hmm. We we have to get better, church. Go ahead. Foster suggests ten principles developing simplicity in one's life, including buying things for their usefulness and not their status, rejecting anything that causes addiction. Having habitually giving things away, appreciating creation more, enjoying things without owning them, and not buying things that may continue the cycle of oppression for others. One example would be choosing to buy fair trade coffee beans rather than brands with exploit unfairly paid African people. Through those simplicity followers of Christ can exert a remarkable influence on those around them and though and through them the entire culture. So simplicity isn't just uh, being simple. Amen. It isn't just being simple. It, it, it's being able to totally depend on God and not trying to accumulate wealth, not coveting, not being greedy, not feeling like I have to have, not feeling like it, it's something that I just want. Yeah. But just being being okay mm-hmm. with, with the, state. the state that I'm in. And I ain't saying, you know, don't, if, if, if the Lord blessed you with a car, praise him. 
Amen. But don't forget to serve him first. That's it. If the Lord bless you with a house, praise him. Don't forget to serve him first. Because he said the earth is his and the fullness thereof. The fullness thereof. And he said he'll take from the rich and give it unto your bosom. He said the king's heart is in his hand. So, so don't, don't mis misconstrue what we're Amen. saying. What we're saying is simplicity is one of the disciplines Amen. that Jesus taught his disciples. And, and each and every discipline that we're teaching, Jesus taught. Jesus didn't only teach, he lived it. Amen. Amen. So that's what we have to get in this walk with Christ. Yes. And I know we don't have many people viewing these videos, but those that we do, I pray that it's a blessing to you. Mm. We're about to just uh, go, turn, sign off. Mm. And I'm going to ask, do you have any last words? No, I just want to, you know, tell everyone to be, be strong in your faith. If you're not and have not given your life to Christ, give it to him today because we're truly living in dangerous times. And the reason that's why God put in my husband's heart and told me to start studying the spiritual discipline because it is much needed. Because a life without Christ is death. And we need to know and understand that today's time, we're really in need of Christ. There's killing all over the land. There's famine in the land. There's pestilence in the land. There's earthquakes in diverse places. We see in the signs of the end of times, and he said, but look up for his, your redemption draws nigh. Yeah. So, yeah. amen. So, in closing, I just like to tell everybody, stay strong. Endure. He said, this race is not given to the strong, not to the swift, but the one that endured to the end. Endure. He said, he'll mount you up as wings. You shall run and not faint, and you shall walk and not be weary. Mm -hmm. So just trust in the Lord. What he's doing in this final season, he's gathering his saints. He's gathering his true anointed people. But we must go through. It's going to be a hard trying time for us, but go through it. We're going through it, but you can't tell it. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. And we thank you guys for tuning in each and every day. And don't forget to say, thank you, Jesus. We love y'all, and God bless y'all. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe share, comment, and share. comment. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Subscribe, share, share and comment. comment. <laughs> Thank y'all. Love you. Talk love to you mission. soon. Don't forget to say. Thank you, Jesus. See you. God bless you. I love y'all.